How many people love the word of God? Amen. See, y'all can't start this new year like this. <laughs> yeah. um, y'all don't want Pastor Marcus to come out. I left Pastor Marcus at home. In fact, I left Pastor Marcus in 2021. Okay? But the way y'all responded today, it's like Pastor Marcus wants to come out. I, I was asking how many people in the room love the Word of God? Um, because if you don't love the Word of God, it's going to be very difficult for you to weather the storms of life. And I'm so glad that we, right here at Link Church, we love the word of God. Let's get into the word today. Um, stand on your feet. We are uh, in, it's really not week two, but this is the second installment of our sermon series entitled Reimagine. We're talking about reimagining the kingdom of God. We're talking about rediscovering God, rethinking the kingdom, and reimagining ourselves and what God wants to do in us and through us. And listen, if y'all will get with this sermon today, I believe it'll bless your life. If you get with the sermon, I preach better. Okay? If you get with the sermon, I preach better. And let's go to St. Matthew uh, chapter 16, the Bible says this, verse 13, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah and others, Jeremiah or one, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said, you are the Christ the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Verse 19, and I will give you the keys of heaven, or I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And today, I like to speak from the subject, I got the keys. I got the keys. Now, for the grammar police out there, I know this sermon title is not good grammar. I know you should say, I have got or I've got. The keys. But, but yeah, mm -mm. it don't sound the same. You got to say, I got the keys. And I believe that God wants to release keys in this room today. And let's get to work. You may be seated. I already prayed. We are kicking off an understanding and a release of the kingdom of God. Because a lot of us are living in a world, in a realm, that does not give us an understanding of the kingdom of God. And if you're going to flourish in 2022, you have to understand, number one, your kingdom identity, which we talked about on New Year's Eve. Number two, you have to understand that you have kingdom access. You have access to the kingdom of God. I feel frustration in the room today. I feel like people have walked in the building today frustrated because of where they are right now in their life. And they are working 10 times harder than they did three years ago. They are more stressed out than they were last year this time. You're working more hours, more jobs. You're hustling and you are grinding. And it's not working. I feel God already in the building. It's not working because you are trying to move something in the earth that will not move without the kingdom of God. You are trying to shift something in the earth realm that has not shifted in the kingdom of God. And unless you have kingdom access, 
You will not see a breakthrough in your life. I'm tired. Maybe it is Pastor Marcus that is rising up in me today because I feel a little um, frustrated with where things are in the church and in the kingdom of God because we feel like God is not working. We are assuming that God is not moving. But the problem is we have become more complacent. We have retreated from our responsibilities. And the reason why heaven has not opened in the earth, the reason why churches are more progressively empty in the earth is because we are walking away from the kingdom access that God wants to give us. So let me just bust into the sermon today and jump into what Jesus is saying to his disciples. And Jesus asks his disciples, who do men say that I am? Now, Jesus is not asking because he doesn't know what they're thinking. Jesus isn't asking because he doesn't know their thoughts are far off. Jesus is not asking this question because somehow he wants to give them a pop quiz. Jesus is asking because he wants to know if what other people are saying about him has somehow contaminated the thoughts of what his disciples think about him. Yeah. Jesus doesn't care what the Pharisees have to say about him. Jesus doesn't care what the crowd has to say about him. But Jesus wants to know if what they are saying outside has now contaminated what the disciples think about God inside. He wants to know if the culture around them has somehow infiltrated the culture in the disciples within them. He wants to know what do you have to say about what they are saying about me. Mm -hmm. And I know we're in a culture today where people are saying a lot of things about your God. And maybe God wants to know, has social media affect your, affected your relationship to the point now where you now are rethinking God? Mm -hmm. You are rethinking, rethinking his power in your life. You are rethinking what he is able to do. You are now retreating because the culture is saying that God does not love you. You are now backing up on what you thought God could do and who you thought God was because the culture is saying that God is judgmental. And God does not love you. And God is somehow distant. And God does not care about what's going on. Are you allowing the culture to change the narrative of who God is in your life? Who do men say that I am? What are outsiders saying? Outsiders are saying that God is unrelatable outsiders are saying that the bible is ancient history that the bible is insensitive outsiders are saying that the bible cannot relate to our modern thinking and the bible is antiquated are you being informed by what others are saying Jesus needs to know, number one, who do they say that I am? And number two, who do you say that I am? Because he wants to know, do the two match? <laughs> what the social media say I am, what do you say that I am? Are they the same? <laughs> and Jesus says, hey, I need to know where you stand. I need to know where you stand. Are you slowly eroding away because you are listening to what they say about God? Because your belief in God is not based on what God can do, but
But your belief in God must be based on who God is. You may believe that God can heal, but that does not mean that you believe that God is a healer. Hmm. You may believe that God can provide, but that does not mean that you believe God is a provider. Because your belief cannot be grounded in what you know about God cognitively, but your belief in God must be secured in how you encounter God experientially. I'm going to say it again for the folk in the back. Your belief in God cannot be based on what you know about God cognitively. It must be secured in how you encounter God experientially. In other words, God cannot be taught only. God must be caught. God cannot simply be learned. God must be experienced. And we are losing the experience of God. Because we want to be taught only, but we don't want to experience him. That's why in-person church is essential. (laughs) It doesn't mean you can't do online church. It means that if you only do online church, you will be liable or you will possibly miss the experience of God. Why? Because when you're listening to the sermon, you're probably doing the dishes. Y'all can't fake me out in the building. When you're listening to the sermon, you're probably also watching the game. So you get the understanding, but you miss the experience. And I have the distinct pleasure today in the room to introduce you to an experience with God. Mm -hmm. I have the pleasure of ushering in an experience of God because you want to sit back and you want to make it through life without having an experience. That's why while we are doing 21 days of prayer and fasting, we also have prayer on Wednesdays because we don't want you just to get taught on a Sunday, but we want you to have an experience when you have have an experience with God, then you are able to secure your belief system. And Jesus is trying to take an assessment of their belief. He wants to know, do they really know who I am based on experience? Because Peter is able to stand up and say, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, because Peter's feet may still be wet from the water he just walked on and he has had an experience with God and he is able to stand up and say you are the Christ why because I have had an experience that's why David picks up his pen in Psalm 34 and he says oh taste and see that the Lord is good he doesn't say just see that he is good he says you got to taste and see so you don't know if God is good if you can't taste him you don't know if God is good if you haven't had an experience with him you don't know if God is a healer unless he delivers your body I need somebody in the room that wants an experience from God you came out of the bed today you woke up and you drove in the rain not just to be taught but because you want an experience I need somebody that's desperate for the glory of God somebody that's desperate for a touch from God I need an experience so that when I go to work tomorrow with all these crazy folk it's my experience that grounds my faith in God I know that God won't leave me why because when I was in my 
debt when I was in my trial when I was messed up God never left me then and if he didn't leave me before he won't leave me now and you know your God based on experience you some things you can't get out of a textbook some things you can't get in seminary you have to have an encounter with God does somebody want an encounter in the room today an encounter that shifts your entire 2022 I need an experience I need an experience there's some things you never forget why because you experience them not because somebody told you and potentially that could be the problem in our modern culture is that we want somebody to tell us about God instead of desiring to encounter God for ourselves Come on. and I believe that somebody in the building today it's when you get your encounter that everything will change. And what you need is an experience. Jesus goes on to say, okay, Peter, that was great. You have just announced who I am. I'm glad that you know that. But flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But it was my father in heaven. You have gotten a revelation of who I am from my father. You didn't get it by yourself. You got it from my father. You didn't get it by yourself. You got it from my anointing. You didn't get it by yourself. I'm the one that deserves the credit. And maybe God can't bless you because you refuse to give God the credit. You refuse to say, God, it was you that did it for me. You refuse to give credence to the revelation of God. That God was the one that opened up your mind. God was the one that gave you a new perspective. God was the one that released your mind into a new horizon. I want you to understand that revelation creates an environment for you to reimagine yourself. When God shows his character and his will to you and he shows his revealed plan to you, it gives you information. So write this down. Revelation is released from God to give you information. And if you don't have the information, maybe it's because you never got a revelation. The way to get information for your destiny is to get a revelation of God. The only way that Moses understands and knows that he is a deliverer and he is called to release the children of Israel from Egypt is because he gets a revelation of God at the burning bush. If Moses never gets a revelation of God, then Moses cannot stand before Pharaoh and say, Pharaoh, let my people go. If Moses doesn't understand, y'all quiet in the building. If Moses doesn't understand that God is a miraculous worker, that God can do the supernatural, then when Moses gets up in the palace, he cannot lay his staff down and his staff will not turn into a snake if he does not see God at the burning bush, get a revelation that God will work miracles through his hand. Your problem is that you're stepping into a new year but you don't have a new revelation 
And that be means if you don't have a new revelation, then you don't have adequate information. So you can't build the business. So you can't grow the venture. So you can't figure out what to do with your finances. You are so confused because there is so much information and you are meandering through the forest of life. You don't have a revelation. revelation. God wants to give you a revelation so you can gather information. Gather information. Gather information. You are way more creative than you thought you were. You are suppressing ideas. You are suppressing ideas because you don't understand what to do with them. Because you lack information. And the only way to get a revelation from God is to be in God's presence. I'm sorry. There is no shortcut to getting a revelation from God that will give you information for your business. You refuse to fast for your business. You refuse to seek God for direction. So you can't get adequate information that will provide the blueprint blueprint for what God wants to do in your life. And I need somebody to see in here that God wants to show you something. God wants to show you something. God wants to expose something to you that you are missing. And it comes through revelation. Because y'all don't like that, I'll move to my next point. (laughs) And where I want to land the plane is the fact that Jesus, he says, because, Peter, you have gotten a revelation, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. (laughs) Not the keys to the earth. I'm going to let that sit. I will give you keys to the kingdom. Not the keys to the business. I will give you keys to the kingdom. Not the keys to education. You're looking for keys in the earth. When God is trying to give you keys in the kingdom. So I've been talking a little bit about Pastor Marcus. And um, do y'all know that um, I was arrested before? It's quiet in the building. (laughs) It's quiet. Did I tell you about how Pastor Marcus got arrested? No, I never told y'all the story. Folks, shot. I'm losing members already, DJ. Folk, like, I ain't coming back to this church. All right, let me clean it up. I didn't get arrested, okay? I didn't get arrested. I was 11 years old, and I was coming home from basketball practice. And I had the, you know, typical black uh, middle-class parents who were always working. And I come home, and it's about 730 And I look in my bag, and I don't have no keys for the house. So I'm like, I'm not about to sit up here and wait for my parents to get home. I need to get in this house. So y'all remember, this is going to date me, and this is going to really put my age in jeopardy. But y'all remember when you didn't have a garage door opener? Y'all don't even remember that? Y'all bougie up in the building today? I mean, there was a time, DJ when everybody didn't have a garage door opener. You had a garage, but no opener. So there was a lock on the garage. Today, they don't even put locks on the garage like that. 
And you had a, you, my, my garage was so janky, right? It was so um, ratchet, if you want to say. It was so messed up that if you jiggled the lock, it would snap the bar and the garage would open. So I'm there jiggling the lock. It's dark outside. I'm jiggling the lock. And boom, the garage door opens. I'm like, yup, I'm in this piece. So I go, and then we have a garage, a door that leads to the house from the garage, and it's locked. I'm like, man, I can't get in this house. So what I do, my dad has a bunch of tools in the garage. I get a screwdriver, and I start trying to, you know, pop the lock open, and I'm struggling, I'm moving. And all of a sudden, a bright light shines in, in the garage. Hey, what are you doing? And it's an officer. And he's asking me questions. Who are you? I'm like, officer, I, li I live here. And, and, and it's like he don't believe me. But I'm like, I live here. And then he takes my information. He's like, all right, get in the back of the car. We're going to take you to the station. And um, we're going to talk to your parents. And then your parents will pick you up from here. And, and what was interesting about that, DJ, is that I had access to the house because that's where I lived. That's where my bed was. That's where I slept. That's where I ate dinner. But even though that was my house, I didn't have a key. Y'all not getting it yet. That it was mine. It was for me. It had my name on it when they looked at the record. I lived there, but I could not get in because I didn't have a key. Oh, yes, God, you're in the room right here. How many things are you not getting in the earth because you have an opportunity for it? It is yours. The name, your name is on it. But you don't have the keys to the kingdom. And if you don't have the keys to the kingdom, you cannot unlock the blessings of God in the earth. I need somebody in the room to understand that a lot of you are being taken away by distracting forces just like they took me away in the cop car just like they brought me to the station I was unable to walk into what was mine because I did not have the key and God Jesus was releasing to his disciples and to us keys to the kingdom if you have kingdom keys you can unlock earthly blessings So it means then that you have to have a key to the kingdom, not to the earth, because there is a reciprocity that is between the earth and heaven. Actually, if you read the text in the amplified version, the text will say, I will give you the keys of the kingdom that whatever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven. Whatever you loosed on earth is already loosed in heaven, which means that heaven has already done the work. But because you are not using your key, you are not experiencing the loosing and the opening. You are not experiencing the door, the entrance into what God wants to do in your life. I need to release the right keys for somebody in the room today. I want you to see that the thing you've been praying about is actually yours and you've been waiting on God. But God. God has been waiting on you. I need somebody to see that God does want to bless you. You just don't have the keys. You are not using what God wants you to use in order for you to step into what God wants you to have. In fact, if you don't get it in 2022, it's not God's fault. It's your fault. Mm -hmm. I feel it in the room. It's not God's 
problem. It's your problem. You have been crying over it because it's actually yours. But you cannot lay hold to it because you are refusing to get the keys. But somebody in the room needs to say, I got the keys. Yes. Mm -hmm. I got the keys. This time, this year, I got the keys. The Bible says whatsoever you bind on earth mm -hmm. it's not up to God because God already bound it yes whatever you loose on earth it's not up to God he's already loosed it and you gotta do the work you have to get the keys I did not entitle this sermon kingdom keys because I wanted you to personalize it and say I got the keys you need keys for your life mm -hmm. you need keys to open up your doors you need keys to open up your rooms you have got to get the keys i want to release keys for your 2022 i want to release keys for you you gotta know that there are keys that unlock my destiny and my purpose and no devil in hell can stop me from getting to my destiny and my purpose it's up to me somebody shout it's up to me mm -hmm. it's up to me if you don't work for it it's up to you if you don't strive for it it's up to you but this is the year that I will use my keys yes I feel God come on DJ come on Charles I believe that this is the year that I will use my keys somebody shout I got the keys God is giving keys for you, not keys for your spouse, not keys for your kids, not keys for your boss. You need keys for you. There are things that are not shifting in the earth because the children of God are not using their keys. I want you to use your keys in the building. Everybody standing. I want you to use your your keys I prophesy keys to you right here mm -hmm. I prophesy keys to you get that thing in your mind right now that thing you've been praying about mm -hmm. that thing you've been believing for get it in your mind right here get it in your soul I need you to think about it I need you to pray about it I need you to put it in your spirit because God is giving you the keys of your kingdom and how do you get it how do you unlock it it's in your faith mm -hmm. it's in your belief mm -hmm. it's when you believe that God not only can but that he will that's when you begin to use your keys I need somebody in the room today to believe that God will do it this year somebody shout this year Come on, somebody shout, this year, mm -hmm. not 2023, this year, mm -hmm. this year, God, I want you to open the heavens, this year, God, I want you to do it in my family, this year, God, I want you to shift my finances, this year, God, I need you to fill and heal my body, this year, God, I need to be filled with your spirit, this year, God, I need to get back this year God I need to give my life to you somebody say this year if the devil can stop you from getting your keys the devil will block your destiny but no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper because you got the keys yes you have the keys it's yours in the building hallelujah it's yours in the room you gotta get the keys you have to have 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 the keys I want to release this prophetic word over you right now and I want you to repeat after me so I'm gonna say a prophetic charge and I want you to repeat it 
because as you are making this declaration I believe the keys of the kingdom are coming to your life and when we make prophetic declarations we respond or we put at the end of it amen because the word amen means it is so y'all not ready in the building when you declare this we put amen on the end because you're telling the atmosphere it is so and I want you to repeat this and shout it like you believe God is doing it this year I will increase spiritually mentally and emotionally no harm I can't hear you no harm no disease no sickness will overtake me this year fear come on fear is not my master fear is not my master one more time fear is not my master I will not bow to fearful threats fearful assumptions or fearful forecast in Jesus name amen I got more I got more my resources and my reach will expand this year supernatural doors are open before me supernatural opportunities are coming my way I will not wait I will not wait I will not wait for things to happen I will not wait for things to happen I will make things happen I will make things happen in Jesus name Amen my mind is healthy my mind is healthy my emotions are healthy I am not incarcerated by unforgiveness my heart is open my will is free Amen I will chase come on y'all not ready I will chase the presence of God relentlessly I will not settle for God at a distance God's word is my daily bread amen I will ask in his name and God will answer repeat this I will ask in his name and God will answer I have the keys this year this year I will unlock God's promises I will unlock God's best for my life in Jesus name amen 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 somebody give God a praise every head bowed every eye closed I believe somebody this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ you can start this year right. And I'm going to count to three. And I simply want you to raise your right hand to indicate that you want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. One, two, three. Is there somebody in the building? We got one. We got one. Clap it up. your eyes closed prayer team let's go God we thank you today oh wind of God the wind of God hey hey the wind of God is blowing over your future right here the, the wind the wind of God the wind of God the wind of God is healing your body right now God I thank you I thank you God that amidst the turbulence in our life right now amidst famine 
supply shortage and COVID God we will use our keys yes God we will unlock the glory of God for our lives God it's not in our hustle it's not in our grind it's how we pursue and use our keys I release strength into your people today strength for where they have to go I come against suicidal thoughts in the room mm -hmm. thoughts that make you want to quit thoughts that make you want to give up I bind it in the name of Jesus I bind fear and loneliness I bind the hand of the enemy that wants you to take your life and take your future you shall not die but you will live hey, you will live in the room you will live in the room and we thank you God for you are king we thank you God for this year we thank you God for the best year that we've ever experienced before it does not mean we won't struggle it does not mean we won't sacrifice it does not mean we won't suffer but God with you on our side we will make it in the name of Jesus and we thank you and we give you glory give you honor in Jesus name amen and amen 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 oh God oh God oh God oh God this year God this year this year God this year this year for your people God I intercede for your this year for Link Church mm -hmm. this year for Link I praise your God right now Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I could stay here today, y'all. I could stay right here. I could stay right here. In fact, we're going to let it sit like this. I want y'all to keep playing. Don't bring up the lights. There's enough lights for folks to leave. If somebody wants to pray, if somebody needs prayer, I'll stay here. We'll pray with you. This is your year. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for coming. We have a free gift for you. You can go to the um, guest services table in the lobby and turn to your connection card. We have a free gift for you. We have next. Next is how you discover your purpose. If this is your year, you need to come to next. Next is in the conference room. You get to meet my wife and I. We'll walk this thing out with you. You'll get to ask questions about Link Church. Do it now. Do it this year. All right? We have three ways of giving. Y'all know how to give. I pray the blessings of the Lord be on your life. In Jesus' name. If you want to bask in the glory, you're free to go. You are dismissed. Come on, sing, DJ. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. watching our service today. We hope and pray that you are encouraged. We love to give here at Link. There are two convenient ways to give to our church. You can text the number 84321 or give online at linkchurchnc.org forward slash give. Join us next week for Link Online. We pray that you have a great and blessed week.